This is an oral history interview with Trey Witzel on the subject of Quidditch at Oklahoma City University conducted on November 7, 2011 at 7.30 p.m. on the Oklahoma City University campus. The, interview, the interviewer is Alexandria Nansen. Okay, so Trey, can yes. you give us um, a little bit of information on what Quidditch is? Um, well, in the world of Harry Potter, Quidditch is the most popular sport played. It's played all across the world. There's a Quidditch World Cup every four years. It's played on brooms, and um, you score points by throwing a red ball called the Quaffle through the hoop for 10 points, and the seeker catches the snitch, which is a small yellow ball. With wings, you get 150 points. And um, in the real world where we play Quidditch, uh, the snitch is only worth 30 points, and um, pretty much everything else you play except instead of flying, you run. And yeah, it's pretty Okay, so can you tell us how Quidditch started on this campus? Um, there was a girl named Jordan Benton who really um, spearheaded the entire thing. I had aspirations to take it out, to start it, and I found this girl who was just obsessed with it, really wanted to do it, and she was going to do all the work. And so I said, sure, I'll, uh, I'll help kind of bring people in and support it with my time and presence. And so she did all the work on building the hoops and getting the money. And I was just, I was the captain because a lot of the people were playing with my friends, so they would listen to me. Um, and I was one of the more athletic people playing. When I say more athletic, I mean the only athletic person playing. Um, hope Sean doesn't see this. Hi, Sean. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, people just start showing up. So what was your position as captain? Like, what did you have to do? as Quidditch team captain? Um, I kind of just hounded people and made sure they came to practice. It was rough at first because there was only like four of us that came like regularly practice, but um, I got people to come to our games and then practice started getting a little better. And so I kind of just made decisions on what we were going to do. Um, we tried to have a few summer practices this year, um, last summer, and so I ran those and then I coordinated and talked to the captains of the other schools and set up matches. Um, and how many practices do you have a week, and how many games do you play? Um, we have two practices a week on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Um, we're actually discussing moving those earlier since it's just day at the same time. And we probably play a match um, once a month. We play a lot with UCO since they're really close. Um, Swazu started getting active this year, so we play against them. Um, and OSU is getting a little more intense about it, so we'll play them. Okay, um, how did Quidditch progress from when you first started it to now? Well, when it first started, it kind of sucked, because um, we had this whole idea that we were going to have, like, houses, and you'd practice with your house. And houses that, meaning, like, from like Harry, Harry Potter? Potter yeah. Um, there's Ravenclaw, Gryffindor, Slytherin, and Hufflepuff, and so people would choose which house they wanted to play for. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of people sign up, but it, no one really came to anything, so we'd have to merge houses. Uh, Slytherin and Ravenclaw really uh, showed up the most. Um, I was a captain of Ravenclaw. That's why they showed up. Um, just uh, blow my own horn. But so we kind of got rid of that and just formed one team and practiced together. But yeah, at first it was only like four people, and we just kind of threw dodgeballs at each other, and it wasn't that much fun. And then this year, uh, at the beginning of the year, before it got cold and school got really busy, we had about 20 people at practice. Like we'd have to have subs, and it was that was probably the highlight height of our was at the beginning of this year. Um, it's tailed off a little so far, but once it gets a little warmer again, hopefully it'll pick back up. Do you play Quidditch year round? Um, yeah, we're talking about going to a tournament in February, but the big season is from August to November. Because in November is the Quidditch World Cup, so everyone's getting ready in the months preceding that. And then in March to the end of school year, so March to June, um, there are a lot of tournaments around. So those are the big times people play Quidditch. And what's the Quidditch World Cup? Um, it's held, it's always been held in New York, or the last like two years it's been held in New York. And this year it's on Randall's Island, and there are almost 100 teams going. Um, they have like 3,000 spectators going. 
and it's this huge event. It's a whole week long, weekend long thing. I looked into going and refing it because at one point they talked about having me like paying to have me go ref, and I would love to do that, but I'm not going to pay to go to New York City to ref Quidditch because mm-hmm. um, that's silly. But other teams that I know that are going, um, we're really close with Texas Christian University TCU, and they're spending six hundred dollars a person to go. Um, so that's not financially possible for us. But it's just a bunch of, it's a weekend where people play a ton of Quidditch and there's a champion at the end of it. And it, I think it'd be a lot of fun. If I could go for free, I'd go in a heartbeat. If I could go for $300, I'd think about it. But anywhere in that. Is there a, does someone fund Quidditch? Is there like a faculty member that oversees? Um, we are forming a Harry Potter Alliance, which is part of the HPA. And it's a national organization that helps, that's a bunch of Harry Potter fans that help uh, raise money for causes and different things. And so there's one in Oklahoma called the Oklahoma Wizarding League, or OWL, as the cool acronym is. But we're bringing a chapter to OCU. And so it was originally funded by Spectrum, the LGBT group. And so their sponsor was kind of our sponsor. But now we're getting a sponsor. I think it might be Dr. Hessler, but I don't know how that process is going. I'm sticking out of that. But... So what was this? Oh, how does it get funded? SGA. SGA gives us all our money. Um, they've been, they helped build our hoops. Other than that, they haven't really, we haven't really asked to pay for anything else. Um, at one point, we were talking about getting team brooms, because right now our brooms are supplemented by the uh, Vietnamese supermarket. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about how to play Quidditch? Like, if we show this video to people 50 years from now and they want to go out and immediately play Quidditch match. Can yeah, you tell them how sure. to do that? Sure. Um, there are seven people on each team okay. um, in a pitch, which is an oval shape with three goals. Uh, there are three balls lined up in the middle, one quaffle, which is a deflated volleyball, and then three bludgers, which are kickballs. Each team has a keeper, three chasers, two beaters, and a seeker. Um, chasers can only touch the quaffle, and they try and score. Uh, beaters get the dodgeballs and try and hit people. And if you get hit with the bludger, you have to drop your ball or whatever you're doing and go back to your hoop before you can do anything else. Keeper plays, stays in the uh, goalie area and tries to play defense, but he can go out and play a little chaser. That is allowed. And then the seeker just runs around and tries to catch the snitch, which is a person running around with a tennis ball and a tube sock around their waist. How long does a normal Quidditch match last? Um, they ra- they've ranged from 10 minutes to 2 hours, but generally around 45 minutes. Okay. And then... Um we heard that you guys are now looking for a new captain of the Quidditch team. Is yeah. that true? Yeah, I was the captain, um, but I stepped down because they wanted to make it really intense. Um, and I have other things, priorities like school and a girlfriend and friends that are a little more important than playing Quidditch. But for those people, it's a, a great thing, and I want them to really go out and make it something important because it did allow me to make friendships that I wouldn't have made um, outside of Quidditch. And that was a really cool thing. When they participated for Relay for Life, I was really supportive and proud of them and went and hung out with them for a little bit. And people know the Quidditch team, so it's great. Uh, I'm just not willing to give that much time. So would you say that Quidditch has become more of an intense and rigorous sport rather than just a fun play um, in? The people that are in charge want to make it a little more rigorous and intense. Um, but there's been a little backlash from everyone else except like the four people wanting to make it intense about wanting to go run. They want to go run and practice on the weekends and no one else really wants to. Um, so it's going to be interesting dynamic to see how Quidditch changes um, from here on. It can either go really intense and if it goes that way I think it'll become, it'll die out. But if it goes back to being fun, I think it'll uh, continue to grow. So do you have any really interesting stories about Quidditch or um, anything that's happened? Probably the most interesting story was we played against uh, UCO University of Central Oklahoma, and they brought a football player uh, who plays linebacker for them to play, uh, which is kind of a dick move. Um, it's, it's cool if I say dick. Um, well, I just did twice. <laughs> so they brought this guy, and he's playing way too intense. And we played to have fun. And it's cool to like tackle me or whatever because you know I played football in high school. But everyone else, it's just not nice to do. And um, are you gonna bleep that out? 
Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Um, and so they bring this guy, and he starts tackling and throwing down, and it's total. It's not fun at all. And he breaks the end of his uh, metal shaft of his broom, and when he breaks it, there's like this jagged edge, and there's a picture on Facebook, and it's, and he must not have been intelligent. Um, a because he goes to UCO. Um, second off, because um, he didn't like get a new broom, he just kept playing. And so while he's playing, he runs into my roommate at the time and uh, one of my really close friends, Sean. And um, early he had ripped Sean's sh half of sh Sean's shirt off, so his um, stomach was exposed. And when he tackled him, his uh, broom handle went into the guy and ripped up. And so Sean had to go to the ER, and it was gruesome. And I got really pissed. And so um, we keep playing, and he tackles me, lays me out, and I kind of grab onto him and drag him to the ground slowly. And he keeps playing, and then he tackles me once, and like I grab onto him to like support my fall because like it's good, it hurt. And then like I kind of rolled on top of him from sheer impact. Then he gets on top of me and starts like punching me. And so I think that I lift my legs up and push him off. And I and for three days I thought I had like super incredibly strong uh, leg muscles, but then my girlfriend told me that they were pulling him off of me. Uh, before I got too hurt, and then he spit uh, his mouthpiece at me and started screaming expletives, and I said some expletives and walked off and took my shirt off and said, come at me, bro. Um, but I really didn't want to come at me because that would have hurt. Um, and so then we ended up losing only by one, and they caught the snitch, and it was crap because they cheat and call halftime. Um, but anyway, and so they wanted to play again, and we were like, no, we're going to the ER because my friend had to go get stitches. And he got 12 stitches, but the main wound they couldn't stitch because it, it was a hole. And the ER doctor said it looked like a gunshot wound. And so now my friend has this awesome scar when we go to tournaments. He gets all mad love from the chicks. <laughs> so, are there any other comments you have or anything else you would like to say? Uh, no. It's just, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, hopefully when you guys are watching, hopefully people will continue playing uh, Quidditch and it'll be for fun and it'll have created lifelong friendships. Okay, this has been an oral history interview with Trey Witzel conducted on um, November 7th, 2011 on the Oklahoma City University